Okay, so on this part, I'm going to show you how we do pool water. So I don't know how this got here or what it is. I just put a rock wall, putting pool water in it. So I know you're wondering how I got the look of water with this. I was, we were talking earlier about gradients. So look at the difference. This is more calm water. This doesn't have the giant cresting spiky waves that this distant water has. So it's going to follow this rule of the lighter gradient that gets more and more the color of the sky as it approaches the horizon. And eventually it would just disappear into the sky if it went, if it went on and on. So this is very close to the sky. I get deeper and deeper to the colors of the water that are underneath right in the front where you don't see the reflection of the sky. But then I pulled in objects coming down into the water. So you can see I did a more subtle back here because there's more sky reflection coming over the top. So they're lighter as they come forward. You can see into the depths of that water more, but they're still influenced by the colors. So I just painted my same, my same scene with the rocks just simpler and with all of this color added to them. So I'll just do a quick example for you right here, how I did that. All right, so I wanna bring this rock down under the water. So I used blue and white in the water, so I'm gonna add blue and white. But now the colors I used in this rock were red, yellow, and blue. So I'm gonna shortcut by using red and green. The point is that I'm mixing this color into the water cup using both of them. So as I said before, also water traps light. So if sun is going directly in here and bouncing around, it's not escaping uh, at some angles out of here. So sometimes under the water can be brighter in shade than above the water because this is in a shadow, this is in a shadow, but light's bouncing around under the water. So there's less contrast. The lights are darker, the darks are lighter. Lights bouncing around all over the place under the water. So I'm gonna make this just a little bit lighter than the rock above it. And then instead of using my typical red, yellow, and white and orangey highlight like I did on these, I'll just use white. I'm just gonna make it blurry, kind of obscure because it's underwater. I wanna make the surface more the focal point here. Okay, now I'm trying to keep this simple. So just blue and white, mostly white. And I'm gonna start making some little squiggly reflections. Now, if they're coming down the wall of something, then they're gonna be very vertical because they're, they're getting stretched across that. You know, maybe a single point is getting projected Right along that. So there's going to be a lot of very straight looking lines coming down this, but I got to be careful not to make them overly bright. And they're going to get, they're going to get uh, more and more blurred and obscured as they get deeper down. So these down here are going to be real blurred out while the ones up high are probably going to be sharper because they're closer to the source of the projection. And you see, I also try to be mindful of where my, if I have a horizontal surface, I'm gonna do more horizontal lines. If I have a vertical surface, there's naturally gonna be more vertical lines that are again distorted or blurred as they go down. Less intense because they're being stretched out. So this happens a lot with these reflections is that the bright spots are the light that's getting all bent to the same point from a curved wave. And oftentimes they're distorted and stretched and they have this brighter border around them. I think I already explained this. Anyway, that happens. Okay, so now if this is a pool, it's gonna have some light reflections on here. I'm using this color back here where, where the reflections are further away and I want to see them more. 
Now, I'm using, I'm using less of the spiky shaped waves on this and using more of these rounded ones because this water is, I want it to look more calm. It's just going to kind of disappear back into here. Okay, now I'm adding more white to my reflection color again because I'm working up higher toward the horizon. So we're getting lighter and lighter. I strategically made that sky almost pure white so I could get a whole bunch of contrast in this picture. Okay, just want to establish some blue reflections because then the next thing is a darker color. So now I'll get a darker blue. And maybe we'll add the tiniest amount of green and red to it to be similar to those rocks. Now the dark reflection goes all the way up to the rock, these little lines. And they come in right in line with the light ones. I'm going to come over here like this. Oh, that color is not quite right. So let's add red and green to that. Yeah. Very blue. So the reason this dark reflection is on top is because, because of these rocks right here. So you make it dark here, but only to the edge of this fall. Now, if it's cascading over this, the same thing that happens right here is going to happen right here. It's going to get darker because of the angle that it's at. You're not going to see through it as much. So we're going to add that same light color that we have. Okay, so then what happens as it's coming over is you get more white water. And then as it comes up near the top, it comes to a point. This is the simple way. I'm not worrying about tons of details. Now there's a lot of complexity to these things depending on where they're moving, but it's based on all the same principles. You know, there's a lot of complexity to all the stuff I showed that I didn't cover, but this is moving and sometimes you can get better movement just by blurring things out, making it blurry. Let's add some more white in there. Doosh, doosh. Dish, 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 dish. 